Okay, so cybersecurity is a shield that protects our digital lives, and psychology is the lens through which we understand our thoughts and behaviors. Together, they form a dynamic and complex relationship that shapes our online world. So let me begin with a quote by brilliant Albert Einstein. The world as we, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. I'm Pooja Shimpi, the founder and CEO of CyberNow that specializes in cyber mindfulness trainings and elevating security culture. Today, I would like to share with you a story that reveals how an intersection of emotions and cybercrime has the potential to change lives forever. Rajni, a woman from India, and John, a UK-based businessman, meet on a dating website. They start chatting and getting to know each other, and slowly, love blossoms. After months of online dating, John sends Rajni an expensive gift, but that attracts a heavy customs duty. Lonely Rajni was so smitten by this newfound romance that she pays the custom duty of $45,000 from her hard-earned savings. But it turns out she never receives that gift and John vanishes in thin air. It seems the fake custom official was none other than John, the cyber criminal. As we have seen, the as we have seen, the stories like Rajni's is a heart-wrenching example of how emotions, uh, how the cyber criminals manipulate our emotions. And, sorry, as we see in the example of uh, Rajni's story, we see that how cyber criminals uh, exploit the emotional manipulation and uh, exploit their victims. Rajni's story is just one of many, but it highlights a stark reality that individuals worldwide are being targeted and deceived on a daily basis. This leads us to a fundamental question. Psychology and cybercrime, is there any connection? Well, yes, there is a connection because uh, when we take a closer look at Rajni's story, we understand that, Im Im that psychology plays a big role in cybercrime. And psychology covers various aspects such as cognitive biases or human intelligence or emotions. But let's focus on emotions today. So emotions has the power to drive our decision. And uh, cybercriminal knows how to harness them. So let's understand a bit more ab about emotions. So emotions are distributed in a two-dimensional space followed by uh, valence and arousal. So valence represents the pleasantness and unpleasantness that is positive or the negative of an emotional experience. And arousal measures the intensity of that emotional experience. And at the center, it's a neutral state where we find the balanced emotion, much like mindfulness. So um, now let's explore some real life examples to understand how, uh, when and how emotions come into play in the world of cybercrime. So these are the four quadrants. First quadrant represents emotions with positive experiences and with high intensity. So the emotions such, such as alert, excited, happiness, the second quadrant represents emotions with uh, pleasant and positive experiences with low intensity, such as content, relax, calm. The third quadrant represents emotions with low intensity but unpleasant experiences, such as sad, depressed, bored. And the fourth quadrant represents emotions with unpleasant experiences but with high intensity, such as tense, angry, distress. So let's understand and let's explore some real life examples of uh, cybercrime. So alertness. 
when we are alert during tax season, we would like to uh, pay our taxes, but that's when we receive a call from a fake tax officer threatening us to pay the tax immediately, otherwise we will face serious consequences such as a huge penalty or even a jail. And they sent us the malicious uh, link for paying the tax. When, when, is, uh, when we all are excited, during bonus time, who is not? That's when we receive a phishing email impersonating from uh, HR. And they sent us the malicious links. Uh, next is the happiness. During festive season, we all are happy and looking to celebrate with our family and friends. So maybe it's Diwali or maybe it's Halloween or maybe it's Christmas. We all are doing online shopping, and that's when we receive the fake um, QR, QR codes, uh, fake, uh, fake shopping QR codes, or the gift scams, or the delivery scams. So in 2021, uh, in US alone, the delivery scams has cost people around $400 million, and it's only increasing since then. Next is uh, in the second quadrant, it's the contentment. So contentment is also an opportunity where cyber criminals uh, say, uh, impersonate as a, uh, a person from a reputed charity group. So they collect the funds and they might be funding it to the terrorist organization. Holiday season. You all are looking forward for uh, celebrating holidays. And that's when we get uh, deals that are too good to be true, or um, a fake website where we enter all our personal details and even a credit card details. Calm. Uh, you might be at a bar and uh, enjoying your free drinks and feeling calm. And that's when a friendly stranger approached to you and uh, they, using social engineering tactics, they exploit all um, your personal information or your work-related information. And that's how they trick you. Boredom can also be a gateway for cybercrime. Depression and loneliness are exploited the most by cyber criminals, as we have seen in Rajni's story. Sadness. After hearing some tragic events happening around across the world, that's when it's used to spread the fake news or fake information. Distress. After financial loss, we might be thinking to cover or recover those financial losses through some other means. And that's when we receive a scam such as a loan scams or lucrative offers for quick money or crypto related scams angry suppose you lo lost your job and you put it on social media that you have lost your job and that's when cyber criminals sent you a fake job opportunity related scams or they even trick you to to pay money and secure the fake job In the moment of extreme stress, you will receive a call that your loved one has met with an accident and you need to uh, deposit some X amount of money immediately. This uh, critical condition can also be used uh, for you to trick into a scam. Consider the feeling of urgency. It's remarkable to see how the sense of urgency can cloud our judgment. Imagine you receive a message claiming that your bank account is about to be suspended unless you act immediately. How many of us have fallen for this trick? This is cyber psychology at work. So is there a, any solution? It's clear that cyber criminals are, exper are experts at using emotions to trick us. And we have looked uh, just for a couple of examples today. But you can relate this to your daily experiences and uh, and identify when and identify this uh, the the potential vulnerabilities that can happen to you. So it's extremely important to recognize your emotional state 
and understand when you might be at your most vulnerable. The second step is mindfulness. That is consciously bringing your mind to the neutral state before taking any actions. This is like a game and you are part of it, whether you like it or not. But cyber criminals are finding new ways to trick you, to manipulate you. And your role is to defend yourself always. But just being aware is not enough because awareness tells us the do's and don'ts. But mindfulness empower us to take conscious actions. Be so it's time that we move towards mindfulness because that's how we truly protect ourselves, our families, our organization, and our loved ones. As we conclude, let's remember the, the golden words from Mahatma Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. So let's be the change maker in the cyber world and make it more safer, more, with more mindful futures. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? OK, thank you so much. So with this mindful change, what is the one thing you would recommend all of us do a little different starting tomorrow? So don't act immediately. As soon as you receive any email, just take a moment and don't jump on it. To, and before taking actions, think mindfully that whether um, the information they are requesting, is, is it really needed and is it really uh, supposed to be given. So that's how we have to train our mind to think mindfully and um, think consciously before taking any action and before revealing our personal information to anyone in this world. Thank you.